Hello, everybody. I hope you are doing well. Um, I have not done a live here in a, in a while, and I'm committed to doing them with more regularity. Hello, everybody. And today we're going to be talking about um, the right diet for acid reflux, GERD, silent reflux symptoms. So a lot of times when people get diagnosed with something like that, or they experience something like that reflexively and intuitively, you think about the foods that you're eating and you modify your diet, uh, or you, you know, Google and try to find the right diet. And then um, many of the clients that I work with hit walls when they experience their symptoms are not getting better. Uh, despite dietary modifications. So I thought this was a really important topic for people trying to figure out their ideal diet that have these issues. And what I'd really like to do is explain uh, why, you know, why your diet isn't working and what you can do to help with finding and figuring out what your ideal diet is so that you don't have to eat uh, out of fear or, um, and you can greatly reduce your symptoms because diet can be a hugely powerful healing medium, but um, if you understand how to utilize it the best for yourself. So I put together just a little presentation to some slides that we can refer to. All right, so as I said, we're gonna be talking about how to create your ideal diet. And this presentation is for men and women who are suffering from acid reflux, difficulty breathing, insomnia, digestive issues, and symptoms of silent reflux, like unexplained heart palpitations or GERD, and or who have been diagnosed with a hiatal hernia, and who are trying to figure out their ideal diet. So if that is you, then you are in the right place. And so I just want to pull out my notes too, so I don't forget everything that I wanted to say. And so I can keep, keep the most um, respect for your time. I can get long-winded sometimes when sharing about this topic. So uh, we will be on for about the next uh, nine minutes, 10 minutes. So 10 minutes of your attention to powerfully transform and change your life. That sounds good, right? All right, so anybody who has had hiatal hernias probably, or acid reflux or any of these conditions, again, have probably tried to change their diet. And today we're gonna to talk about the reasons that you may be experiencing limitations in your diet and what you need to do to reduce your pain and so that you can eat without being in fear. So the first thing is to understand is that reflux really falls into two primary categories. You have, you know, GERD, acid reflux, which really manifests as, you know, heart pain, and uh, burning sensations, um, typical heartburn, but then you also have silent reflux. And so those symptoms can be very different where you have um, sinus congestion, mucus congestion, difficulty breathing, heart palpitations, your sinuses and your lungs and your vocal cords are really aggravated, but you may not experience um, you know, a burning sensation necessarily in your chest. And so for that reason, sometimes people don't get diagnosed or think that it's acid reflux right from the beginning. Um, and so that's very important when you're trying to determine your ideal diet. So I just wanted to preface that and, and before we continue going on. Um, and obviously there are dangers to when acid reflux in these conditions are not controlled. And people who have silent reflux almost lend themselves to the more terrible things that can happen when these issues are not controlled, and that would be esophageal cancer, well, you know, which happens because of the chronic uh, backflow of acid into the esophagus, um, intermingling with the cells there, it can become precancerous. So it's a really serious condition, um, and esophageal cancer and acid reflux of both been on the increase since about the 1970s. And certain research is indicating that that has a lot to do with the different types of additives and preservatives that we've been using in our food since around that time. So that will all that will come full circle to that topic, actually. 
Okay, so we went over the two types of acid reflux. Um, and then, of course, the symptoms of acid reflux would be things like hoarseness or voice problems, constantly clearing your throat, sinus drip, difficulty breathing, excess throat mucus or postnasal drip, difficulty swallowing or coughing before you eat, difficulty breathing, uh, troublesome or annoying cough, sensation of something sticking in your throat, heartburn or chest pain or indigestion. And what happens if these things are not controlled is that it can lead to a very terrible outcome, which would be, again, the esophageal cancer. Okay, so as I mentioned, we've noticed that many of these disorders have been on the rise since about the 1970s. And research is showing that it's because of certain food additive, additives that have been, you know, added to our foods, um, such as citric acid and um, absorbic acid and different food additives. So food additives, as well as certain foods, uh, actually dilate and create dysfunction in the LES. So the LES is the lower esophageal sphincter. And so it exists right at the bottom of your esophagus, and it's the gate, essentially, that opens and closes to ideally allow food to go into your stomach and to prevent acid from going up your esophagus. So what many of these food additives have done, such as citric acid, and there are other foods too, which I'll tell you what those are in just a moment, is it actually weakens the LES, the sphincter. So then it's not closing properly and acid is going up your throat. And the other thing that many of these food additives do, as well as specific food groups, is they also increase acid. So this is just, you know, obviously the worst thing that a person with acid reflux could have happen. The sphincter is not closing all the way, and then they're eating these certain foods that actually increase the acid inside of the stomach. Um, I also want to tell you about pepsin. So pepsin is a enzyme that's in the stomach that gets activated when you eat acid. And so when your stomach is constantly overly producing acid, the enzyme pepsin can actually float and it can relocate to different areas in the body. So it can relocate in your sinuses or in your ears or in your throat. And then when you eat an acidic, acidic food, the pepsin is activated. And so it's almost as though the enzyme starts to break down the different areas of the body where it's relocated. So if it's in your lungs, then you might experience coughing, or if it's in your throat, your throat might start getting hoarse, or if it's in your ears, you might get itchy ears. Uh, if it's in your sinuses, you might experience post-nasal drip. So we talked about the, again, the LES or the lower esophageal sphincter and what that is. So there are foods that loosen the LES and increase acid. And these are a list of the majority of what those foods are. Um, coffee, I should say more accurately, caffeine, chocolate, alcohol, raw garlic, raw onion, sugary diet soda, sugary bottled tea, wine, vinegar, tomato sauce, and smokables. So that would be cigarettes or e-cigarettes or marijuana, smoking marijuana of eating an edible is going to be much different, but if you actually smoke it, it actually um, can create or, or make worse dysfunction in the LES. And then additives such as citric acid, absorbic acid, and corn syrup. Also mint, fizzy drinks, and fruit drinks. So there is tons of, uh, there's a good amount, I should say, of scientific research that shows that those specific foods, again, weaken or create dysfunction inside of the LES and simultaneously increase stomach acid. But there is diversity in some of the science. So some people actually don't have reactions to coffee, for example. They drink it and it doesn't show that there's any change in their LES, or they don't, sh they don't share that they have any you know, worsening or better of symptoms. And those are, that holds true for all of the items on the list. And so really, what I wanted to drive point the point home today is that 
there is no universal diet that works for every single person that has these issues that I've come across anyway. And I've been doing this for about 15 years. And so the reason for that is because there are different root causes for a different person. Um, and those primary root causes are as follows. So it may actually be an issue with, um, you know, overproduction of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Uh, but it could also be the way that you process stress and anxiety, for example. So stress and anxiety actually makes pain receptors more sensitive in your stomach in many people. And so what that means is that you may interpret that something's happening inside of your digestion that is painful, but really there are very few changes. And they've shown, the science has shown that that holds true for people that have many different digestive issues, irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux. And so you experience IBS or a painful gas in your GI tract when really there's not really any big notable change that's happening in your GI tract. So it could completely have nothing to do with your diet. It might have nothing to do with your diet, but it might be the way that you are processing the stressors in your life and how what you're choosing to focus your attention on and how you're processing your stress or your anxieties. Another primary cause that has nothing to do with diet could be your posture and your alignment. Uh, so you may have suffered from an injury. Sometimes people develop these issues after doing some kind of a hard workout uh, or something like that. I've worked with many personal trainers where they knew the moment that something happened and then all of a sudden they had terrible acid reflux afterward. So it could be your alignment. Um, and then the other reason is that it could be something like SIBO or a bacterial imbalance in your digestion. And so all of those things, those four different, those four different root causes would require a different dietary approach, different lifestyle modifications. Uh, so I wanted to share that with you. But in general, a lot of times when I'm working with people, I will say right off the bat, eliminate these things, you know, because they do loosen the LES and they do increase stomach acid. You may have a few of those that don't do it, but for the first, you know, 28 days, just do it just for the sake of safety. So under how to choose your right diet is really an understanding uh, what your root cause is, you know, is understanding what your root cause is. And you can figure out what your root cause is through, you know, a series of self-assessments um, and um, working with somebody like me <laughs> would be the best way. Um, but yeah, so why don't your diet work? Your diets work is you may be on the wrong diet. Your issue may not have anything to do with your diet. Poor posture, misalignment, or injury can cause digestive issues, or it could be your stress response that can also cause different digestive issues. And a truly holistic program addresses all of these. So I hope that you enjoyed this information today. I do have a free masterclass. I'm gonna put the link, not in my bio, but below the description of this video. If you want to take the free masterclass, it's about 75 minutes long. And at the end of that masterclass, we go much more in depth. You will learn a lot. I've gotten so many compliments about this masterclass, direct messages from people saying that they just learned so much they didn't even know about when it came to these digestive issues. And they were really grateful for that. Um, so that's been really nice. But I also tell you how you can work with me. You know, So if you want uh, guidance and you need help, then you'd watch that masterclass just to make sure that you're aligned with um, some of my thinking and it feels right to you and um, and it's something that you want to do then at the end of that masterclass you can sign up to work with me essentially so thank you so much for your time and your consideration i hope that you found that information helpful and that it helps you i look forward to doing more of these lives i'm going to be going back and forth pretty much through talking about um acid reflux, silent reflux, GERD, and hiatal hernia related issues and causes, and then also talking about stress management and mindset practices and how to utilize the full power of your mind so that you don't um, burn out, as work and relationship burnout is a big, a big thing these days. So those are going to be my primary topics. If you find them interesting, welcome to the group. 
please say hi. Please leave any feedback below this video. If you have any questions about it, I'd love to know. And I hope that you have a wonderful day today. Thank you.